Yay. Okay, it's recording to the cloud. Thanks, participants. So now I'll start recording. Hello, Ken. And Stephanie is hiding her pretty face. She's got her, her picture instead. <laughs> hey, at least I don't have tape all over my camera now. Yeah, this time we can actually see you. I need to start wearing a hat, though. No. Oh, I disagree. I love seeing everyone's faces. And then I figure we'll give it like, I don't know, like five more minutes and then we'll get started. There she is. Hi, Stephanie. That Hi. backdrop looks suspiciously familiar to me. <laughs> it looks like a golf course, perhaps. <laughs> it's like Burcrest to me. Yeah, it's hole 18. It's so pretty. My background is my bookshelves. I feel like it's kind of noisy, but I like it. It makes me feel like Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Did you guys have specific questions? Oh, we find you one. Beauty and the Beast. Oh, sorry. What did you say? I said you could probably find a specific Beauty and the Beast one. I have a bunch of them, but in order to run them, it takes a lot of memory space on my computer, and that is sacred, so yeah. regular backgrounds for me. I'm in uh, my bedroom, so I figured most people don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my bed's made, but still, it's not very professional. Did you guys have specific questions on stuff you wanted to learn today on Canva? No, I mean, I've been in there quite a bit, um, probably just like some tips and tricks. I still never did get that file that you oh. said you shared on his listing. I don't know. And I even upgraded to the professional one. I just paid for oh. it myself because I've been using it for my work too. Um, mm. And I still didn't see it in there. So I thought that was okay. weird. I maybe sent it to the wrong email address or something. Okay. Well, I just screenshotted your post and he's that. <laughs> that will work as well. And then Ken, do you still need a flyer for that property? Uh, I'm trying to, I don't know. I don't I know. know why I would need one. And um, I mean, I, I mean, I can post it on the, on the sign, I suppose. Um, but usually, you know, those are neighbors and they're walking. By. I, I, I don't, think so but um, okay. I guess it wouldn't it wouldn't be horrible to have one or so yeah I haven't, I haven't it, had one neighbor call as far as that goes but they're more looky lose than anything else right I mean but it's yeah. you know the potential so yeah I mean Isaac lived across the street from his house before he moved into the house <laughs> that he bought so sometimes neighbors take over but I don't know, it's weird times, like, I don't know, everything's affected by this stupid virus. <laughs> yeah. We've got Denise joining. Hi, Denise. Hi. How are Hi. you doing today? I'm doing okay. It's been a crazy day. Yeah? It's 11 a.m. and it's a crazy day. Yes. <laughs> I'm <leaving it. laughs> Okay. Did you have any specific questions of what you wanted to go over today? Miss Denise? 
Uh, no, I was just hopping on to see what I could uh, learn. Cool. Okay, well, it's 11.05. I think it's a fair enough time to get started. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Okay, so today um, I want to show you guys Canva. So if you have a question as we go along, you can either drop it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself, whichever is totally fine. So I'm going to share my screen with you. It's going to be Denise for a minute. There we go. And there's Rupert. <laughs> okay. So let me shrink -dink this down so I can actually see what I'm doing. So canva.com um, is a website that I really like to utilize for basically everything we design. Um, Sarah Brannon and I are in here pretty much constantly. Um, we've got LinkedIn banners, we create social media posts, we've got sold options, um, birthday stuff, etc. So lots of different options on how to design things in here. Um, something I really like about Canva, for example, is Debbie wanted to do this graduating class like fundraiser to buy signs for all the seniors who are graduating who don't really get a big hurrah. And so this was the original design is I made a Facebook cover and then I was able to copy it and resize it to be an Instagram post and then an Instagram story for her and then an Instagram story for us. So it's basically like you do one big lump of work and then slightly less work and you still get all this result. So I'm super about it. <laughs> so to get started, um, I need to make a sold design for Hannah. So I'm going to look up Hannah. And we'll do this one. Um, if you look at our, here I'll show you our Instagram. I try to find I have like a lot of different designs, like a lot of different solds and stuff because I don't want everything to look like, I don't want this sold to be exactly the same as this sold, exactly the same as the new listing. Like I want diversity in our feed. Um, you can see it all looks very similar. Like it's all pretty heavily branded, but I want it to look slightly different just so people don't get bored and they don't see the same stuff over and over and over again. So looks like this was the last one of that type that I had made so I can do that for Hannah. So in Canva, um, something to know is there's a lot of layers in our design. So Stephanie and Sarah have this probably down pat, but Denise and Ken, um, it might be a little more challenging if you take this on. So something to know is that like all of this stuff is on here. It's not going to go anywhere. So even though I delete this photo that just sold is going to be there, it's just going to disappear because it's on a white background. So do that. And then over here, excuse me, over here in Canva, um, so I've already opened this design that I had pre-made for Hannah. There are templates you can use. So this square is an Instagram size. I really like making Instagram sizes just because that way you guys can post them on Facebook. They always show up really nicely in the feed. And also there's not any weird cutoff when you go to Instagram. Oh. Stephanie asks, are these font in the ROG style guide? If not, can you send the main calligraphy narrow and regular fonts? Yeah, so um, I'll just type out the names of some of the fonts and show you that right now. So um, in our agent resources folder we've got all the fonts and all the logos but just so you guys are a little more familiar with them let me shrink this down so if i click this this one is called the freeland font when it's in its regular form it's called trial by cupcakes so this is the realty one groups like signature handwriting font um personally I don't always love it. I think it's a little bit hard to read, but it's on brand, so there's not much I can do. Something I do like to do about it, though, is if you go up here, Canva has all these options for fonts. So you can pick which font you want, what size, and you'll see 
as you shrink or make it bigger, it will change the size up here too. You can change the color. Um, Trial by Cupcakes doesn't have a bold or italic version. Same with Museo Sans, which is our type or our hand, our printing font. Um, but you can do the underline. And then uppercase, I never do. I just type in caps. Um, but right here, it says spacing. So you can pick the line height, which would be if there was a second line right here, how close it is to this line. I like to change the letter. So if you can space it out a little bit better, sometimes it looks a little nicer. Um, the handwriting font is tricky because if you go too far, obviously the letters don't connect anymore. Um, but just giving it a little bit of space to breathe, I think usually makes it look a little better. Another font we use really often is the Museo Sans family. So Museo Sans, we have a few different options here. So Realty One Group gives us um, five different weights. I never use 900, so it's not up here, but Museo Sans 100, the weight of a font is how bold it is. So this is gonna be the thinnest, skinniest one we have. Um, this is one that I really like for online use. It doesn't translate super well when you print, um, just because it is so thin. If you're printing, I would say stick with 300 weight or heavier. Um, then you run into the issue of getting into the 700s or 900s, and then they get really, really chunky. So again, if you wanna give it a little bit of breathing room, you can make it squished, give it some breath. I find that giving it a little bit of breath makes it look a little more expensive. Um, but that's the Museo Sands. And then we have one more font we regularly use. It's this Bebas New. Nueve? I don't know how you say that. But it's this big, chunky, I feel like it's kind of like a sporty font. Um, this is a great header font. So when I do headers, so like you know, eye-catching sentences just like just listed or just sold or, you know, homes in your area. Like this is a great font to use for that. Or I would probably do the Freeland Trial by Cupcakes. Um, this one you can use. It's just kind of plain. I think it makes a lot better of a copy, which is like all the text. It makes a really good copy font. So we're going to delete those. Stephanie, did that kind of cover your question, my dear, just sort of the different fonts and how they look? Yeah, I, I think I remember seeing it in the style guide. I just didn't translate that to um, to Canva yet. Um, I, I, do, I will say if, if you aren't using, I don't know if all your agents have the premium version because I actually signed up for my own being because I'm a graphic designer by trade. So I wanted to use it on my own. Um, until I upgraded to premium, I didn't have access to all the fonts. So now that's so not an issue. So what I've been doing, um, if I share a design with you, the fonts will translate with it. So I can share things with brokers as templates, and then you guys don't have to pay for the premium one. I will say Canva premium, I think it's like $12 a month. Um, it's not super expensive. And you can just make so many things like I've definitely made Mother's Day graphics for like my mom and stuff on here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, I use it for my full time job now too. I, I jump back and forth between my Adobe stuff. But yeah, I have $1,000 Adobe software. And sometimes this is just easier. So it's really easy. Canva is also available as a mobile app. Um, so if I'm out and about, I will say it's a little precarious to have a little teeny phone and you're making a design, but like if I'm waiting for my plane to take off, like I don't have anything better to do, so I open up Canva and mess around. Um, but with those fonts, what's cool about Canva Pro is you can upload your fonts in here. So I've got um, like our logos are available here because we paid for the premium one. So any of our logos that I need, I've already got uploaded, ready to go. All of the fonts I've got uploaded, ready to go. Um, let's say I drop in a shape. It's got my brand colors ready to go. So I've got the right shade of gold, the right shade of black, and the right shade of white. Um, black and white, 
I'm not stressing too much. Um, I think shades of gray can still be really classy and look really good. I will say this gold is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, it's, in, it's a shade that if you go too green, it looks like baby poop. And if you go too yellow, it just looks like it printed wrong. It is a precarious gold. <laughs> so um, the color guide is gonna be found in our brand standards guide. Um, why don't I show you guys how to find that right now, just in case. So let's go to my one login. Nice. Stephanie says she uploaded the gold, gold foil image and she uses that as a background. Um, I will show you guys that in a second. I use the gold foil all the time. I think it's so pretty. Um, so when you go to your one login, for me, I go to brand guidelines pretty often. You probably won't have to. So if you go to my apps and down here, this little carrot can change. It might show you your core. You can hit everything and then everything Realty One Group offers is going to show up for you. Um, we should be able to edit this soon, so don't get excited like about List Hub. We still don't offer it in Washington State because our multiple doesn't agree with it. <laughs> but we'll just breeze past that. So there we go, brand guidelines. So if you click here, this is a public website. So like before um, I really knew Stephanie, for example, she was helping Ken with his branding stuff and she was like, well, where's the guidelines? You can send this website to anyone. So if you're having signs made or something, or if you're paying a designer to make something for you, feel free to share this guide with them to make sure it stays on brand. Um, so here's where you can download the logos. It's going to talk about the different usage of the logos. Um, the biggest violation I see regularly is the one without anything behind it. So this one does have to be full. Um, to show you what I'm talking about here, let me, let me grab a circle. So let's say I grab this. So a lot of times I'll see something where someone will put the logo like this, like over a picture. Let's imagine this is a picture in the background. You can see that the, the letters of the one circle aren't all the way filled in with a single color. That is something that has to happen in order to be on brand standards. Um, you can sort of mess around and pick and choose what colors. Um, it does have to be black, white, gray, or gold though. Um, like the brand provided colors. So sometimes what we'll do here, let me upload a picture. So Hannah sold properties, this cute little house. So we'll talk about these layers in a second. So I drop it into the corner, stretch it out. It almost fits perfect, but I can just about center it there. And then right here where it says position, you can position it backwards, but I'm going to actually put it to back because I want everything else on top of it. So now if I'm trying to make this one circle show up, let's say I change this to white and then I'll put the circle where I want it. I like to always keep it in the top little corners. Um, the reason for all the ones like in the corners of everything I make is because like spam bots will go onto Instagram and stuff and the multiple and they'll take these designs and they'll list them on Craigslist as rental properties. Poor Holly had a whole dickens of a time about it a while back, but um, that's why I try to put like sort of a watermark on there. Obviously you could still crop it out, but it just complicates it. And usually it's like having an ADT sign outside your house. They're just gonna maybe pass on your house to try and break in. But now I've got this little white circle as the background and then I just drop the logo on top of it. As soon as those letters are full, we're good. So um, I think I'm gonna ask Sarah if maybe she can do that for us so we can share with you guys these logos with the letters filled. That way we don't have to do this little circle hack. But if you do, that's my workaround for the time being. Um, the logo also is supposed to have clear space all around it. So it's important to keep sort of this space right here the same as this space right here. So. For example, if we had this logo, it's not great to have it like, 
I don't know, let's say like that. Like there's no clear space around the logo. Like, yes, it's a big logo, but that's not, not quite what we're aiming for. So I'll take this and I can revert it back. Ta-da, easy, easy as pie. <laughs> um, we are Realty One Group Turnkey. I like to use the Realty One Group logos along with the Realty One Group Turnkey logos. Um, it is up to you. You don't have to always use the turnkey one. If you're disclosing that you're a broker, you do have to say like, I'm, you know, Craig Tuttle at Realty One Group Turnkey. But in your designs, um, just saying you're with the firm is enough. So for here, it shows you the clear space examples. Another option is we have sort of four logos. So we have just this one circle. So it's just that one. And then we have just the lettering, the Realty One Group. And then we have our whole one, which is Realty One Group, and then turnkeys down here. Um, and then you can break it off again. So the big thing is to make sure that the one and the Realty One Group stay in proportion. You can't break up the logo and put like the one circle right here and then have the Realty One Group underneath it. It's a violation of the brand standards. Um, I will say for our holiday grocery bags, the print space on those black bags was like this big. And so I maybe just put the one and then the turnkey under it. I think that's gonna be fine. We're just gonna sneak on past that. <laughs> but it's not something that I would maybe publicly market like in our advertising. So to go down here, it also has the um, minimum size of the logos. So it shows you basically they still have to be legible. Like I can barely read this little guy. My vision's okay. So try to keep them a little bit larger. Um, so the icon, it says it's a secondary brand mark only. You can only use it in specific instances. Realty One Group is pretty fussy about that. Um, feel free to not worry about it and just send your proofs to me and I'll tell you if it's in violation or not. Um, this is the alternate icon. So this one, until recently, we weren't allowed to use on any digital or print marketing. It was only allowed to be like embroidered onto like hats, golf bags, etc. cetera. Um, I've been seeing Realty One Group corporate using it a lot more, but they still haven't given us the go ahead. So for now, I'm just avoiding it. Improper use of the logos, obviously you can't change the colors for like pride or whatever. Um, you can't change the colors to anything that's inconsistent with brand standards. I think that's fine. The biggest ones that really, really perturb me is when we have an oval logo and it looks all warped that drives me bananas. So try to not do that. Um, the easiest way to get around that. So people will go like, I guess on Canva it doesn't shrink. If you do that in other programs, sometimes it will just condense the logo. If you pull it from the corner, that is the easiest way to make it bigger or smaller. Always pull from the corners when you're changing sizes. Um, colors. This is gonna be in here. This is um, not such a huge deal online. Like I said, finding the gold online is pretty easy. If you're sending anything out to print though, maybe take a screenshot of this, just attach it in the email along with the link to the branding guide, just so your printers know exactly what gold this is because it is really tough to match. Typography. it decides to pull up. Oh, apparently not. There we go. <laughs> so the fonts, the Museo Sands family that we talked about, you can see the 900, it's nice and thick. And then we've got the Beavis, the sporty font, which is right here. And then we've got the Freeland font, which is when you download it, it's gonna say trial by cupcakes. I don't know why. It's just what it's labeled, but it's the Freeland font. They've got some information about hierarchy in here um, as far as the fonts go. My big belief, and I agree with them, is this, is you shouldn't really use more than three weights. So let's say these are all Museo Sands. So we've got this one in 100, this one in 500, and this one's back in 100. So you've got two weights, 
and then four sizes of font. So you've got one size, two size, three size, and then the logo. So this is still to brand standards. This still looks good. Um, I have seen some designs where people get really into the brand and then it just looks a little bit messy. If you stick to this rule of like three weights, like three fonts, you're going to stay in much better shape. And that's something that comes with practice, I think. Um, what I really like about Canva is let's say I share this design with Stephanie. So it's, oh, Stephanie, can you remind me of your email? Can you drop it in the chat, please? Perfect. So I'm going to share this with Stephanie right now. Boom. So when I share this with Stephanie, she will be able to get this exact design and she shouldn't have any issues with the typography or anything. But if she does, if something happens, um, since I've shared this with her, I can still access it from my all of my designs page. So she can tweak it and then just shoot me a text or an email and say like, hey, I edited this, but I don't know if I love it. Um, can you please check it for me? And I can check it, no problem. Um, and then I don't have to even send it back to her. I just make the changes like Google Drive. I make the changes and then it happens in real time and then it's ready for her as she needs it. Um, so that's sort of an overview of the major brand stuff. So let's get back into Canva. So for Hannah's just sold, um, I think this looks good. I will say this just sold area, the letters look a little bit big and sort of one of my tricks in design is to think of spaces as like, as rectangles or squares. So. If I'm making a square here, I'll show you what I'm thinking. So I don't really want to overlap Hannah, so I'm going to go to there. And then I don't really want it to be too much taller than Hannah, so I'll go to there. So I ideally have drawn this little, you see the sort of grid lines that I made, like from the top of Hannah to the side of Hannah is where this square is. And so then I can put this in the front, so position forward. And then I'm going to shrinky dinky down, drop it. And then we're going to center it on here. You can also move things. And when you see that little dashed pink line down the center, that's going to tell you you're on the center. So just sold. I think that looks good. So let's get rid of that gray box. And it doesn't look as good after. So you can sort of mess around with it. Um, if I put the gray box back, something I also do if like pictures are really noisy is I'll change the color to like black or white, depending on the photo. I'll run it off the page because that's just good basics of design. Give it a little more space to breathe. And then what I'll do is I'll position this backwards. So Hannah sticks out in front of it. And then over here, this is transparency. Transparency is super helpful to sort of change like you still get the font to pop off the picture but you can still see what the picture is um, it typically is a better call i think than just having a big black box or having nothing so i like to keep it usually between like 50 and 70 depending on the photo um, this one doesn't need that much help so we'll keep it at 55 feel like I still don't really love how this looks. So I'm gonna mess with it. Let's try sticking this up here. And you see that pink line down the center? That's how I know this is centered. Let's stick Hannah's here. And then I'm gonna change the font just because the Freeland is not working for me. So let's change it to, you can stick with me sale. And we'll shrink it down because it looks kind of enormous. And then give it some breathing room. And then right, this doesn't look great. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So it's got equal space on top of the one and underneath the one. I'm gonna position it backwards so the one is in front of it. And then I'm gonna extend this from right here 
over to this one. So it's not exactly centered, but it gives sort of similar space between the J and this edge and the exclamation mark in this edge. So that's probably how I would run this. Um, if I wanted to make the house look a little bit bigger, you can just pull the corners. Yeah, I like that better. And then just to crop the photo, you just pull on it. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Can't see you guys, hold on. <laughs> there we go, there's my little grid. Cool. Okay, so there's my um, just sold for Hannah. Something I will show you guys too is here in your uploads, I've got like, oh my God, I have so much stuff. <laughs> But I have a bunch of like design elements that I'm happy to share with you guys. Um, so for example, scroll down. And this is me going from memory because I need do these all the time. Got all your cute headshots. Christmas party photos. Cat photos. <laughs> it wouldn't be me without them, right? Here we go. So I've got these different gold accents um, that are transparent that you can drop onto photos. So like this big gold one. This is sometimes something I use if I'm putting like the price on a photo. Um, sometimes I like to crop it just to make it look like one little paint smear. I love, love, love. So this is the gold that Stephanie was talking about earlier. Um, this is just a gold foil that I use as a background all the time. Um, if I am dealing with a design that's kind of dark, I can sometimes crop it just to continue using this light area and just use that. Um, I like to play around with where the shine is. So let's put a little gold around Hannah. So that is huge. So shrinky dink it down. There we go. Okay. And I think that looks okay, but if I wanted to change the gold, you can hit this little you see this little, like, the arrows that look like they're in a cycle? That's how you can rotate things. So I want to make sure there's clear space above Hannah's head. I want it to lead into the picture, so I'll keep that gold there. Um, I will say in design, this area is known as the dead corner. So you don't really want to put too much pertinent information in this area. People's eyes sort of draw to the right side of the page. So I try to put your guys's either our logo or like a headshot over here. That way all of your contact information shows up really easy. Um, also, this to me doesn't look centered. So I'm gonna grab Hannah, the her name, and then I'm gonna hit shift and I'm gonna gather all of these guys. I'm gonna group them. And then once you group things, you can move it all together at once. So pretty easy, pretty cool. That looks better to me. Cool. So there's Hannah's just sold. So now let's try something else. What's cool about Canva too is once you close it, like it's saved, it's good to go. Um, sometimes if I've been working on things, I do have to refresh the page because otherwise Canva is going to only show me my old designs. And now the Hannah should show up, so that's good. So let's do, um, let's do Ken because Ken's multiple listing slide had a lot of pictures in it. So I'll show you some of my little secret hacks I did for this. <laughs> and then give it a second to get its breath because that's not right. There we go. Um, so Ken's brand is hashtag live two five three. That's like a big part of Ken's branding. So that's something I wanted to incorporate into the, 
into the design. Um, normally, like you guys know, I'd have like our one logo over here, but Ken's name is pretty long and his information is pretty short. So I thought if I kept the live 253 up here, it wouldn't really work down here. It would just look too font heavy. It would just look too wordy. So I switched them. So we've got the one logo here, the live 253 here. And then since this is a new listing, um, I don't really do it for sold because they're already sold. But whenever we have a new listing, it is always nice to have the equal opportunity housing logo. Um, I have them in transparencies in both white and black. Poor Debbie, I sent her the white one the other day and she's like, I didn't get anything. And I was like, you did, you just can't see it until you save it and then drop it onto a photo. Because when you send it, it just looks like a plain white box. <laughs> So um, something that I can do in here, so if Ken, let's say this property was in, I don't know, what's a long city name? So now you can see that, that the zip code doesn't fit. So if I wanted to keep the zip code, I would just go back here and change the spacing just a little bit, easy tweak. Um, these are individual text boxes that are lined up. So if for some reason, I don't think anything would be too much longer than this, but if you need to change the size of this, just make sure that when you shrink it or grow, you'll see the little pink line. That's showing that the top of the built in 1951 matches the top of 14,024 square feet. So that's kind of an important thing. And then we've got the photos in here. <clears throat> so I've got our little one logo in the corner. I've got the big photos. Um, I try to do our designs like a walkthrough of the property, starting with either like, usually I start with the kitchen. Um, this property, I thought I should start with the living room because I think these hardwoods in that fireplace are probably more alluring than the kitchen. Um, so started with that and then down here, these are little white bars that I use as spacers. So you can just drop those on top. Sometimes I think it breaks up the photo because like you can see without it, it just doesn't look, I just don't think it looks as good. I think having that little bit of white to break up the edges of the photos makes it feel a little bit cleaner and makes it look a little more professional. Um, so let's say this is the address, because let's say we're reusing the same template, but Ken's got, you know, the Snohomish listing. So over here, you've got um, your copy style. I like to hit duplicate, and then I'll just drop that bad boy down here. Delete this guy. You can see the pink lines. It's centered on the page. It's centered in that area. Boom. So that's basically what I do when you guys have a new listing and then I'll just delete these photos and pop new ones in. Um, let me see, one of these photos we sort of tweaked. I think it was this one, maybe. Yeah, so can you see Ken right now in that mirror? And you see this itsy bitsy piece right here? It's my world, my, it's my, my new trademark. It's like I'll be hidden in one of the photos and. It's the secret Ken. To find me, you know. It's like but, Alfred Hitchcock in his movies. <laughs> <laughs> so photos are something. So Ken took these photos himself. And I'm going to say, Ken, you did a really good job. I think you're getting really high, getting really low for the photos, making sure the blinds were closed so it was equal light. You know, I, those little things really matter in photos. So good job. But we still had a little secret Ken here. Oh, someone's in the chat. Oh. <laughs> so what I did was I duplicated this photo. Put the little guy there. And then I took these, you see those two little chunks? So I duplicated the photo. And then I was like, okay, I want to get rid of Ken's head. And there's flowers here, so I can't cut it too close. But what I can do is I can crop this photo to be basically the same area as Ken. Do you see what I'm saying? So we've got just this little white area. And then, because you want to match the light, 
and then you can make it really small and then just line it up in your picture. Do you see what it did? How it, like it mostly covered Ken? So I that's actually knew, I actually knew that was there and Stephanie and I worked on a he took a cell phone out the table. So I don't know, I just thought it was kind of funny myself. Well, I thought it was <laughs> funny too, but I wasn't sure if it was on purpose or an accident. <laughs> oh, Isaac is driving. I was like, what is that happening in the photo? Okay, cool. Um, so then we move on to the kitchen. So I believe, Ken, I still have your original photos in here. Cool. So the original photo of the kitchen that I used was this guy. And when I put him in here, you can see it doesn't quite reach to the edge here. So you have a few options. Um, I pulled it to the side and that got rid of a lot of the cabinets. If you want to focus more on that, you can continue shrinking it or like making it larger to make it fit the space better. I wouldn't really crop out the lights because I think the ceiling lights look good and you don't want to make the kitchen seem smaller than it is, but that's a way that you can put the photo in there and sort of change the dimensions to make it fit. And then remember, just position backwards so that logo pops back up and you're good to go. Um, I think the backyard photos were some of the more complicated ones. Um, so like this one here, if you move our logo, I didn't really want to stick it here because I think that looks like an alarm for the garage and that could be part of something that sellers would want to see. So I thought that sticking it in this corner would be a better idea. As long as the watermark's on there, I don't really care where it is, but I do try to be conscientious of like, I don't want it here because it will take away from this light fixture and those shelves. So let's stick it over here because no one cares about old ceiling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that's something that I'll share with you guys. Um, if you ever need help making your photos fit or if you need any help tweaking your photos, let me know. Something that is also really cool about Canva is, you know, with COVID, it is harder to get professional photographers out there, especially if finances get harder for brokers. There's probably going to be more amateur photos being taken. Um, in Canva, you can adjust your photos. It, this is not as good as Photoshop. Like, this is not professional editing at all. But sometimes if it's a gray day, you can add a little bit more saturation to make your pictures pop a little bit more. You can change the contrast. I think brokers tend to do like this, like really heavy contrast. If you are not sure how your photo edits are going, just keep an eye on your whites and your grays because those are going to tell you like that white is not white. That white is white and those grays are starting to turn blue. So that's sort of my guessing guide on like how to quickly edit photos here. So can you guys see like the saturation, if you look at the grass and the blue skies, that's really where you can tell. So not saturated, super saturated. <laughs> um, I love saturation and color just because I love color, but I know some people like really straight to the point photos so you don't have to do any editing if you don't want to. So that's this one. So let me go home. Um, open house, we'll do this one. So this is a new design that I made for Craig the other day, but it's open to all of you guys to use as you please. And when it first starts loading, you're going to be like, those are not the right fonts. Once it fully loads, it'll have the right fonts on it. Um, so this is something where this house is very pink <laughs> and the neighbor's houses were really overtaking the photo. So I really blew this square part of the house up. Um, I put these white edges, so I could have extended the picture all the way to the edge, but I think 
using this sort of Polaroid-esque design where it's like white information at the bottom with just a square picture on the top is really, really on trend right now. So I've got all this information in here. I'll share this with you guys. Um, you're welcome to change it as you please. So if we um, delete this photo and let's say Ken's hosting an open house, which I'm sure if he did, he would be very safe because he knows he's important to me and everyone needs to be super duper safe right now. So I would make it so it matches the edges here. It's kind of hard for me to see, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and you can see this guy's a little bit too wide until the pink lines show up, cool. I'm gonna zoom back out and then I'm gonna fill the photo till there's equal distance like around on this side and this side and this side. And then we've got Ken's photo here. And then I would change this. Um, this is gonna be kind of tricky. So with this gold swirl, I like to move it out of the way if I'm changing someone's picture. So let's go down to Ken. You guys still with me? Everyone doing okay? Isaac's little smiling face. That must mean I'm doing okay. <laughs> I got everything uh, until you said good morning. Good morning. <laughs> God, we got our headshots taken a long time ago. There we go. Um, so I think this might have already been a circle of Craig. So if I put Ken on here, like it's not gonna fill that circle. So what I'll do is I'll go over here to elements and then in the elements there's a bunch of different options. Um, so if this was an animated um, social media post, you can look up the different animated, just type the word animated and then what you're looking for. So animated clean, um, animated cat, like you'll see all of the designs that come up. It's awesome. Canva is amazing. But for now, we've got the shapes and then the frames. I'm going to grab a circle frame. I'm going to delete Craig. I'm going to line this up down here. So I can get it sort of the same size. There we go. And then I'm going to even that out. And then I'm gonna take this picture of Ken and I'm just gonna hover it over this and you can see it drops him in there. But he's not centered. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit crop and that gives me the option of centering him in the frame. And then we'll just move this guy here. And then sometimes that happens, it's a layering issue. So let me fix that really quick. Should help. And then I just put it near it and then move it over with my keys. It's still not in the front, so there we go. And then it needs to cover the bottom of Ken. There we go. Boom. So that's how I would change it. And then I would say join. Robin. Yeah. While you're doing that, I, I tried to type it and then I got kicked out. So I don't know if it actually worked or not, but you actually can drag the photo and just hover over Craig's face in this situation and you'll see it switch out. I do this all the time with the photo um, options. You so don't have that, to do a new circle every time. That normally worked, but for some reason that picture of Craig when I did that. So like if we've got this picture of Marty, and then I've got Rhonda and I want to put Rhonda into Marty's circle. It won't let me do it because the oh. picture was already saved as a circle. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's tedious, but it's not if, you, if you use the photo shape and then you've put a photo in there, maybe that's it. Yeah. yeah so um, like right now, if I wanted to put Rhonda over Ken's face. Come well, on. I think you have to drag and hold. Don't click. Don't click Rhonda. Like delete that one. So what I'll do, it's it's um it's this gold swirl on the edge. I layered it in the front. So if I position that backwards, 
then it's going to know that I want that dominant yeah. photo there. Because what it was trying to do, it thinks of that gold swirl as a photo. So it's like not replacing it there. But once I did that, I could do that. Does that sort of show you guys what we're talking about? So we just take Rhonda and hover her over and boom, we got Rhonda. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, as far as the elements go, I'll show you like, so Anthony Venturi's birthday was the other day. Um, he got to fly a plane over the Olympic range because he's a pilot and his life is super cool. <laughs> so I wanted to do an animated social media. Um, so I had actually started with this design as a regular design like this and then I hit resize and when you go here this is where you have the different options of changing your sizes so um, I could do animated social media and I'll hit copy and resize um, copy is a really good thing because obviously an animated social media post is going to be significantly larger than a regular just png file um, so I always like to sort of have both options available. So if I started with this open house, this is a great template. I am going to keep it going forward. This is my new questionable design. We don't know how this is going to turn out yet. So this is sort of like when you copy, you give yourself the option of doing a rough draft. Um, over here, they've got all these templates for other animated social media. And so when you hover over them, you can see what weird stuff they do. Some of it's really cool. So if I want to use some of these and I don't want to search for this over here, you can either add notes, you can add a new page, or you can copy page. So I'm just going to add a new page and then I'm going to click this template and then I'm going to take this circle because that's the only part of it I want. And then we could make it go around the open house. Like obviously this is hideous, so I would never use this design. This is just meant to show examples. But like if you had um, the price of a property or if you had some sort of special payment assistant or something like that, that could be something where you would use something like this. Or let's see, I really like their twinkly stars. So we'll go back down to this page, delete it, add a new guy, throw this guy on here. And then I really like these little stars. So we'll take them up here, make them small, duplicate them. Um, whenever I do something like this, I usually will try to flip this if possible. That way it looks a little bit more balanced so it's not exactly the same. And then I like to do sort of diagonals through the picture. So if this gets your attention, this is the last thing you see before your eyes move off of the page. Um, what's cool about this too is this animated social media one, you can download it as a video, you can download it as I believe a GIF, um, you can download it as an animation which is basically a GIF if you have premium um, and you can download it without any motion as a PNG or a JPEG. Um, so, for example, if I was going to post this on social media, and we'll ignore that the address is long, I would download it. And I usually do PNGs just because they do a really good job of keeping all of the colors and pixels correct. Um, if I was printing something, like if I was printing a flyer, I would do PDF print. Um, if this was the animated social media, I would pick video or GIF. So. You can download those from there and then I usually either like text them to myself or I'll post them on Facebook and then save them to my phone and then post them on Instagram. Like I said, I always think it's best to post on Facebook and Instagram separately. Um, from Instagram, I will share stuff to our Twitter just for strengthening our hashtags because Twitter sucks and it is not great for real estate for being perfectly candid. <laughs> um, but I think when you translate stuff like posting on Instagram and then sharing it to Facebook, it shares it as a link to Facebook. And 
or a link to Instagram and it just doesn't look as good. So, um, yeah, that was a lot of me talking, but how, how's everybody doing? Very good. That was great information. Good. Okay. Do you guys have any more like quick questions? We've got like five more minutes. So just Robin, a little trick that I've, I do with what you were saying about like getting it from your Canva because I do like to work on my laptop when I'm doing design stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I just leave it there and then I go to my phone and open it up in my phone and download yeah, the it right Canva to app. my phone. Yeah. And then yeah. that's super easy. Yeah, that's super easy. Um, when I have like stuff that I'm sharing with Craig, I'll send him the zip files just because it's easy. Um, if you're sharing I don't know, like uh, Craig had a listing that he shared um, his marketing with a lender. And so it was cool because the lender's marketing person also had Canva, so I could share it with her that way. But otherwise, I would just have saved it as a zip file and shared it with them that way. But. All right, cool, guys. Well, thank awesome. you so much for Robin. coming. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right, we got more chat. Bye, everyone. Bye, thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming.